Hey everybody, it's Angela, and I just wanted to share an idea today that I got while I was at the office supply store the other week. And I always check the clearance section of um, my local staples, and they had this box of um, manila, it says like manila letter two part. And I looked at them and I thought, you know what, these would make a great junk journal or smash book. Uh, for people who, I, I know a lot of people ask me how I bind my homemade junk journals, and I have a spiral binder, but a lot of people don't. They don't have access to one, or they don't want to pay um, to use one, but, but they still want to make a junk journal. Maybe they don't want to sew it, or maybe they don't want to use just a three-ring binder or binder ring. So this is just another another option I thought I'd throw out there. And what these are, and you'll recognize these, because um, they're kind of old school. It's these manila folders, and they're already bound, and they're already kind of pleated or gusseted so that they'll expand. And you know how junk journals tend to get really thick really fast. Um, so that comes in handy, and it's, you know, all really sturdy because it's made this way professionally. And then it has, you know how it has the little prongs, you know, the two prongs um, at the top. And this one has... Um, then two interior pages, and all of them have the prongs at the top, every page, and they're kind of tabbed, and so I thought, that's pretty cool, and so I went ahead and got this, um, there's, uh, how many are in here? There are ten folders in here, and like I said, there's two in two partitions inside, so there's actually like um, four pages, and then it already has all the metal prongs, fasteners in there, six fasteners, and I got it for $5.50, so for ten of them, and so you can't beat that, I mean, you can't hardly, um, you know, get any kind of junk journal supplies uh, if you're going to have to buy them for that kind of price, so I just thought that was pretty cool. And so I brought it home and I wanted I've been wanting to make a um like a nature journal um for uh where we live and um because I love to take nature photos and so a lot of times I don't know exactly what species of bug or tree or or whatever I'm taking a picture of. So I kind of wanted to learn about it and have a place to put all my photos and kind of just make my own little nature journal. And so I went through and pulled a bunch of scrap papers. A lot of these are from uh, the Recollections Mosaic Memories paper pad and it's just a one-sided paper so I don't feel bad about you know just gluing it down. And I haven't really decorated the cover yet. I've just got some of this kind of um, woodland creatures washi tape that I stuck on here. That's about all I've done to the cover. And I went ahead and um, I put some patterned paper on each of the um, manila pages. And then on the in the original ones, there's like a little, if you can see it, there's a little tab right here and that's part of the gusset that expands as it gets fuller. And what I did was I got this craft, a bunch of craft paper, um, eight and a half by eleven craft paper from uh, Tuesday morning, and it was a dollar ninety nine for a pack of. Doesn't say how many are in here. Oh, twenty five, and um, a really nice heavy um, craft paper. And so I went ahead and on each of these gussets in between, I added another page. I just used some of this um, Cool Tack Redline tape and put it along that little spine piece and then attached this in there. And I am going to put more matted photos and um, information that I find on the internet about the different types of animals or whatever on here and just start filling this up. So. This is, I've just started, so there's not a ton of stuff going on. I've just kind of gathered everything together, really. And so I have these inserts that I'll put stuff on. And then I just um, printed out some of my pictures, and I did this first section is mammals. And so 
I put pictures of some uh, bucks that I've seen, um, some deer tracks, um, some uh, deer that I saw on the night vision camera, and so this page is pretty much all just deer, some does walking across there. Here I've got, um, sorry for the glare on here, here's a little bat that I um, found when I was moving some lumber. Here's a bat that I captured on the night camera. Um, this one's really hard to see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right where my thumb is, is a cougar that was in our driveway. And um, here's a little mouse. And some of them, you know, they're not the best pictures because, you know, wildlife doesn't tend to stand still. And so I try to, you know, as I get a better picture of that animal, I'm going to maybe swap it out. And so, you know, um, here's a little chipmunk. Um, here's some cougar tracks, and um, here's a plaster cast I made of them. Um, then I have a couple of these little flashcards, these kids' flashcards about animals. I've got one on the chipmunk, I've got one on the cougar I've stuck in there, I've got one on this raccoon. And here's this little, the raccoon's little eyes as he was peering out of our plum tree where he was eating my plums. And, um, then some raccoon tracks that were down by the creek. And then I've just used my Dymo labeler to put mammals on here. And so then this next section is going to be birds. And so I've just got some turkeys matted on here. And I'll fill this out. Here's my inserted page. And on this page, I did spiral bind in my own um, extra pages. Um, this is part of a bird book. I found an old bird book at a used bookstore. And um, it only had a few colored pages in there. So I just took out the section that pertained to my area. It's like I didn't need, being in Oregon, I didn't really need the Hawaiian birds, you know. Um, so I took out things, that, the birds that I see, like this western tanager. And um, I have a picture in here of one and just the different sparrows. And then I cut out the stuff that, the information about the birds that I've seen. So I kind of just made a little tiny bird book that pertains to the pictures I have here and the types of birds that that I actually see in my neck of the woods. And so I, you know, it was hard to cut it up because I'm not the kind of person that just, you know, cuts up books. Um, but I bought the book specifically for that purpose and it was pretty old. It was, well I shouldn't say pretty old, it was just, you know, from like 1970 and since I'm older than that I shouldn't say pretty old. <laughs> so anyhow, so these are all my bird pictures and um, for right now I've just got them in these, um, all of these plastic inserts were some that a neighbor was going to throw away and they're from photo albums like from the 1950s and he had a whole bunch of them and he was just tossing them and they had a weird binding system from the photo albums in the 50s so I cut that off and then just punched I found one of these two hole punches that fit these prongs at the thrift store for 99 cents so now I have the actual um, punch for the two prong thing and so I just punched them and then that way I can put like a whole bunch of photos on this I can mat photos on here I can, you know, use my tool hole punch and put information over here. And so anyhow, this next section is reptiles and I printed a bunch of stuff up on from the internet from the um Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and it just talks about all the reptiles in our area and I'm going to map photos again over here. And then these are photos that I've already taken of different um, newts and lizards and frogs and snakes and stuff and then um, this is going to be the insect um, caterpillars um, butterflies um, here's me I'm holding a little praying mantis and I have a little flashcard praying mantis on there and I'm going to put photos here and I've just got other insects dragonflies um, snake flies um, ladybugs, grasshoppers, bees, hornets, and I've also got my gastropods, my slugs and snails are in here too. And then I've got some um, 
internet information that I've printed out and stuck in here. On this one it's just got the crawdads out of the creek and information about crawdads that I got off the internet and some matted photos and I'll put more here. And then these are other water dwellers from the creek. Uh, diving beetles, dragonfly larvae, water striders, little snail, periwinkle snails, um, then a bunch of pictures of the salmon when they come up the creek to spawn. And then this section is livestock because there's a lot of people nearby me that have livestock. And um, here's the neighbor's cows that got off, got out and came across our front yard and I caught them on the, and here they are in our yard, <laughs> I caught them on the security cam. Um, but uh, so these are just different ducks and chickens and goats and cows and um, this is um, our neighbor kids who are walking their sheep, they took their sheep for a walk, he, he was getting it used to so he could show it. Um, donkeys and cows and oh we have a neighbor who um, has a bunch of free-range chickens and at night they go up in the tree to roost so at dusk you'll see the trees near there filled with chickens and this section is going to be flowers so I'm going to put those here I've got some photos of flowers already and um, in here this section is going to be trees I just have a little bit of information I've printed out some tree photos with the um, different seeds and trees and shrubs and um, there's some poison oak and you learn to recognize that right away and um, then the last section is going to be the fungus um, you know mushroom lichens and mosses so I've just got a bunch of different fungus and a lot of different mushroom photos got some matted or photos I stuck on here. I'm going to mat some more. And then here's just some different lichens and um, mosses and things that I'm going to look up and try to figure out what they are and, and um, write them here. And so the way I did this was I um, actually combined three of them. So there's three of those folders combined together on here. That's why this one's so big. But you could pretty much do it as many as you want and um, then this just keeps expanding um, you know to be able to, let me get this in frame, to be able to take all your information. So um, I think it's going to be really cool. I mean it's not, it's a lot different, um, different, a little bit different way to present your you know your junk. I like it because it's, um, you can kind of take stuff out and um, you know, change it around a little more than you can a traditional junk journal. So anyhow, I just thought I'd put this idea out there for any of those who are interested. If you have any questions, just uh, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.